Hey guys, Kate Share here, and I know two book club videos in a month? Is something going on with Kate that she's finally productive? Somewhat. Because I'm still doing my um back to the billboard reviews for 2019. Whoops. <laughs> So yes, I did finish another book that I won in a Goodreads review, and it was a pretty quick read, and um, I'm not really saying that as a good thing, because I really should have indulged myself more into this book because of basically what it's about, and it's non-fiction rather than a fiction novel. I'll explain when I get to it. So for this next book that I read for um, this episodic series. Um, I read, as I said, a non-fiction book. I kind of read a non-fiction before and talked about it on this channel um, with Finding Dorothy, which is about the um, sort of... I can't really explain it because they or the author wrote it as fiction, but it has... Um, it basically told the story of the wife of Frank Balm, the guy who wrote The Wizard of Oz, and it told her story about how she was involved with um, the um, Wizard of Oz movie that came out in the 30s. It was written like a fiction novel, but it was like a biography or... I don't know what it was, but I really liked that book. I can't say the same for this one, because I was more so disappointed of what it could have been rather than um, what it was. And what I'm talking about is called Bowie's Bookshelf, um, a, basically a series of 100 books that changed David Bowie's life by John O'Donnell. So um, from what I gather, John O'Donnell, I think is a journalist, essayist, or something like that. And he decided to do a project on um, a list of 100 books that David Bowie personally released. I think it was three years or something before he passed away. God bless David Bowie. For those of you who don't know who David Bowie is, and I'll be surprised if you don't know who David Bowie is, he is one of the like greatest musicians of all time. Like He shares the same plate basically as Elton John, Prince, um, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, jo George Michael, like, he's up there. He was up there. And, um, he died in, God, I can't remember. It was years ago. I would think, I'm thinking 2016, but I think that's wrong. Yeah, I was right. David Bowie died in 2016 in, I think I remember this on the news, like, I think he died in a Manhattan, New York hotel that he was staying at, and, um, uh, I, th if I remember correctly, I think it had to do with drugs. <laughs> I'm gonna be frank, though I like David Bowie and I highly appreciate him as an artist, I was not a huge fan of his music. Like, David Bowie is, like, in the same realm. El of, like, Elton John, Madonna, uh, George Michael, where they were highly, highly praised by the LGBT community, and, like I said, like, his talents are revolutionary. Like, he was one of those that pioneered music, like Elton, like Michael, like Prince, like Freddie Mercury from Queen. Like, to diss David Bowie, is like dissing God in a way. Like, if you say something bad about David Bowie, his entire fan base is gonna come after you. Like I said, I have nothing against David Bowie because I literally have no reason to be against David Bowie. It's just that some of his music is actually really great, but he's not one of those artists that I'm really obsessed with. I didn't really get much exposure to him as I did with Prince, Whitney, Michael, Elton, George. His music is very unique, and it doesn't really grab everybody, but anybody who's anybody knows who David Bowie is. Um, before David Bowie passed away, he released a list 
to his um, fan base or the public 100 books that changed his life. I'm not sure if he said it was his favorite books. I, I Maybe some of them are his favorites, but they were basically books that um, inspired his career, inspired his person, like inspired basically his everyday living. And um, John O'Connell, I th did I say O'Connell before? I think I did. By John O'Donnell. John O'Donnell. <laughs> John O'Connell is basically the person who um, took all 100 books from this list and put them together in 100 mini essays on basically why these books are, well, basically why they changed his life, why are they a major influence. And on hindsight, or in, on paper, this concept is a brilliant idea. Like, the moment I saw about this book, I love reading books about books, and I love reading other people's opinions about certain books, and I thought, this was a fantastic idea. Like, I want to know what type of books David Bowie read. I'm just gonna say, right now, I only know, like, probably 1% no, not 1%, um, maybe 10% of the books or material that Bowie read that changed his life in here. Like, um, let me go into the table. This book actually has a table of contents, and God bless it does. Like, it mentions, um, he liked Dante's Inferno. He read, um, Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange. Lolita is in here. Um, the Iliad is in here. Like, he has T.S. Eliot in here. Like, I kn And Peter Ackroyd. I know most of these writers in, in these books. But, um, there are also a lot of other books, or, like, the majority of them that I've never heard of by authors I've never heard of also. That also might be the fact that most of them are, like, foreign authors like there was one book where it was like written by a french author and it was actually a french story um one like he had a couple of japanese authors in here but i think most of them in here are british so um i haven't really been exposed to a lot of british literature i think the farthest i've got to um, British literature of modern day was um, Brave New World and any per one of my friends who knows me knows I despise that book with every bit of my being. And it's not like I've never been exposed to um, British writing before because I think most British writing I am aware of is either from the Canterbury Tales or Shakespeare. Not much, and like I said, not much about like Brave New World modern level of novels. And I really think I should get to them more because a lot of people love British literature. And I think this book did help me out, help me out, I mean, in some cases. I think what really turned me off, and yes, this book did turn me off and that's why I like sped read through it. I think the mini essays were too short and too obvious. Don't get me wrong, like, like I said, I thought this was a brilliant idea. But I think it's really hard to do, like, a journalism essay about 100 books that a musician or a person really loves if that person is either, um, dead? Or you're just taking a lot of their quotes from either past interviews or quotes that they send their normal lives. When it came to like the first few chapters, like I was really impressed with um, A Clockwork Orange and uh, The Outsider. And I cannot pronounce that title for the life of me by Nick Cohn, Dante's Inferno. I thought it was all really interesting stuff. I just wish that these little essays were longer. Now, Here's the thing, this book is about um, 281 pages long, or maybe even less than that because I'm reading the biblio bibliography. So altogether this book is um, 
or the contents are 276 pages. And for 100 essays, I think because this is like nonfiction and there's like 100 books in here, I think that John O'Connell was afraid that he was going to make them too long and too boring, which I completely understand considering this day and age. Like, who wants to hear about like an old musician's um, 100 favorite books or whatever, whatnot. But then it becomes the problem of basically what John does with each of these books is that he explains in like kind of three parts. Um, it explains one, what the book is about. And maybe for a lot of these books, it makes sense because probably not everyone has read um, the, probably not everyone has read um, William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying. So he explains like what the book is about. He explains either um, a part of Bowie's life or the life of the writer and how the writer inspired to write their book to begin with. And then at the end, it makes a small connection to why um, David Bowie thought this book uh, had an influence on his life. And all three of those points would be a great idea for an essay. However, for most of them, I think I got to the point where, um, it e like, these books mainly talked, or John basically touched on, like, either the violence of the book, and there's, like, multiple sub-themes for violence in there, whether it's, like, pedophilia, or, um, actual, like, war, or just, like, abuse. And then it also tries to connect for, with either the characters of the book are LGBT, or that the author was also LGBT, which I wouldn't say the word inspired because that, I know that's not right, but it influenced um, David Bowie's um, bisexuality. As I was saying before, he writes these essays like very short and very quick. I think not only because of the book's length, but like, I'm not sure if there was much information that John could go off of. Like, in the premise, or in the introduction, um, John actually said that he met, he had the honor of meeting um, David Bowie once, and that was in 2002. Before his release of his album, Heathen, um, he, John was working or he was the sponsor for a music festival on the London South Bank called Meltdown. And that year was when David Bowie decided to curate it. So he flew up to New York to talk to him in the hotel and basically had an interview. Like, John was basically a fanboy of David Bowie. He always wanted to meet him, so it was really cool. But the thing is, he only met David Bowie once. And this was, and this was back in his young basically younger years when he when he was like a, a young journalist so he probably like um interviewed Bowie for other reasons and this was before the um 100 book list came out so as I said very um hard to write a book on the subject when um you only met the artist once and but when you had the idea to um, write this book about the 100 essays, the artist tragically dies. I bet it would have been a lot of times easier to write this book if John did have an official interview with Bowie before he died about the books in the first place. But honestly, I wouldn't blame him either. Like, I know how very hard it is to, like, get these types of people to interview. Like, Bowie's probably doing, like, over a hundred interviews like a year or something like that because of how famous he was and and he then he goes on tours like he does a lot of other things again I don't blame the guy at all because it would be super ignorant of me to just say oh you should have like done an interview like right when the list came out or something like no I'm not gonna do that but I will say though um if you guys are interested in David Bowie and his um, personal life when it comes to these books, I do recommend that you go read it yourself. If you're a bigger David Bowie fan than I am, you probably have um, more value or more interest 
in a book like this. Um, I'm, I think the book came out at the end of last year. So I think you can buy it on Kindle or um, buy it in the bookstores now. Like I got this a month ago in a Goodreads with, and I got, I got a review copy basically. This was not meant for sale at all. It was meant for giveaways. So I'm not sure if this is even the final copy of this book. I don't know. But basically how I read it, I just wished there was a lot more like intertwining your essays. Like this is coming from a from an English major who can't write an essay for crap. Like I suck at five, six paragraph essays because I find it very difficult to find a point. Like I really had trouble connecting like David Bowie's interests with these books based on the essays that I have. Because if all you're gonna write is what the book is about, who the author was, and how the book might have connected with David Bowie's personal life, I don't know. Like I said, I sped through it. After like the first third of the book, I was extremely bored. I was like, is this going to be the person's writing style for the rest of the book? Turned out it was, and I was not impressed. Like, maybe if it were, it would have been different if, they, if John or whoever else wrote a book about, like, inspirational movies or books about an artist I do like. Like, for example, if this was Michael Jackson, I would have been all over it. I would have been all over it if this was about, um... Uh, Troy Sivan, if this was about Celine Dion, if it was about Josh Groban, Whitney Houston, I think I would have been way more invested. But I did an experiment. Like, I tried it. I think it was definitely worth the shot. And as I said, if you were way more into Bowie and you want to know about these books that changed his life, I highly recommend that you read this. Like, it's one of those books from um, past artists that you just need to grab onto if you want a real connection with the musician from a fan's point of view. On my personal behalf, and this is probably the wrong opinion, because I'm allowed to be wrong sometimes, I would rate this basically a... I don't want to rate it too low. Kind of like um, a 6 out of 10? I know that sounds very, very low in context. But that's, I think that would be like a... Not a 3 out of 5, but... um. No, it would. No, it actually would be a three out of five. Do if I'm doing math correctly. Like it's somewhere in the middle of. If you're a real fan, you'd be actually invested. If, if you were probably like more of a music person, you will also probably be invested. But for me, who is just a l less than average Bowie listener, more invested in books and how it connects to a person, I just wished it had more. So that's basically uh, my review of Bowie's Bookshelf. If you guys liked this review, make sure you hit the like button. If you have read this book already, or if you're a David Bowie fan, or if you're a music fan, or whatever, if you have your own opinions about this book, please share them in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and watch the rest of my content. I promise you won't be disappointed. I'm Kate Sharon. It's been real. Ciao!